So, um, so first of all, I wanted to thank you all for coming to our talk today. And uh, collective talk, this idea has been in my mind for a while. You know, uh, I've been talking to my collector's friends and getting along with them for some time. I found actually every collector has a lot of, you know, <laughs> stories behind. And they are just real person. They want to talk about their collections and they want to share their experience. And every time when I talk with them, I found sometimes their attitude towards money and towards value is very inspiring for me because we sometimes only see art in, in a very certain perspective, but they also provide me another perspective. I think, why not we organize a talk and we share our conversation to everybody? So that's why this idea came to me. And until I met Oliver, I think, OK, we can do it. It's the time. We should do it. So uh, to introduce our guest today, Oliver Ust, he's a very, very passionate young collector. And uh, he is a car designer. <laughs> Um, start, to, uh, start to collect art not for a long time, but very soon he is very clear what to collect and he is having his own strategy towards art collecting. So today he's going to share with us his experience and his collections. Okay, let's start. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Oliver uh, I'm a art collector and uh, I met Celine not too long ago, maybe just some weeks or maybe one and a half months ago and then um, on, a, on the opening I think yeah. and uh, then we, we came into talking and somehow she talked about her artist talks and then she came up with the idea about collectors talked about this uh, some weeks ago and then we, we figured out uh, okay let's find a date uh, <laughs> I will do a little talking about my collection and about my experience as she said uh, and I hope uh, um, yeah, you get inspired and maybe you want to start immediately collecting art as well. Uh, this would be the, the best case in my opinion. So, um, but uh, yeah, this would be the best as well. And um, I guess we just start. Um, in the beginning, I collection. Uh, this is uh, the name of my collection. I will talk a little bit later why and uh, what's the philosophy uh, of this name. Um, the topic is how to start a collection from scratch and uh, I will give an example analysis of the potential of contemporary African art which is the focus of my collection. Yeah, the intro, um, in the beginning I will talk uh, about two topics about the contemporary African market in general. Uh, in, the, in the international market about the collection, me in, as a collector, how I started, um, the collection name, how Caparius select artworks, I think this is an uh, interesting topic, uh, and then give some advices in the end to uh, other collectors. Okay, let's start contemporary African art. Um, it hasn't been on the radar for a long time, um, it's not even gaining much more global exposure. Um, I guess a lot of people like in the arts read a lot of newspapers and articles about this topic. Um, currently the status of the art infrastructure is growing, uh, a lot thanks to like private uh, initiatives, for example the Zeitzmocker in Cape Town uh, was built uh, by uh, a private collector, Lupin Seitz, and um, as well like art fairs popping up, like uh, the 154 uh, currently, I think in the seventh editions um, in London, New York, and Marrakesh, and all of this structure hasn't been there for some years, and now getting much more uh, attention, um, and as well, international galleries give more uh, attention to the artists because they see a potential uh, um, embracing these artists, giving some new input for their uh, gallery artist selection. Um, on the next page, um, the interesting thing about this contemporary art market currently, uh, we see similarities to uh, the Chinese contemporary art, in, art market or the Chinese contemporary art market grow in the 90s and 80s, uh, some centuries ago, uh, because uh, we have like uh, a rising number of high net individuals getting more uh, into 
the interest of contemporary art and um, the participation not only from these African collectors, uh, furthermore, a much more uh, international buyers um, are getting interested into this. For example, the last auctions, about 70% of the bidders came from Africa itself, from the continent itself, and 30% came from uh, around the world. So, and this is a similarity we had in the 90s and 80s in Chinese as well. Uh, China, China get more uh, high net uh, wealth individuals. Um, they collect art from their country, but as well then, uh, at this stage, uh, more and more international collectors came and saw a potential in the Chinese market. And this is a similarity uh, uh, between these two uh, markets. Uh, back to this kind of um, African contemporary art in the national market. Um, back in 2017, uh, Sotheby's, the major auction house, uh, released the news that they will uh, dedicate a specific auction for African, African contemporary art. Uh, of the Bonhams, uh, this is the second major uh, auction house who are dedicating this auction to this field. Um, and they see, like in the like, uh, during these years, a steady grow in auction result, not only from African, as I said, as well from international collectors. Um, according to the Art Basel market report in May Moses, uh, this market share from the African contemporary is less than one percent. Less than one percent. In, com in comparison to markets like uh, China, UK, and US, um, China with 90% and UK with 21% and US 44%. It's a very small market uh, with a huge potential to grow. Okay, um, just for a little introduction about more about art. Um, I guess uh, a lot of people have already know heard about some art. From African, one of the most uh, representative or most famous representative is Ella Natsui with his uh, bottle cups. Uh, um, huge installations, uh, very incredible when you see them in flash, I have to admit. And uh, a lot of big museum tape, uh, all of these famous collections uh, bought them in the early stage, and he never went for, uh, or like, <coughs> he, he never, in the beginning, never really had a gallery. Like, but, he still got fame and uh, did an incredible work till today. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, um, there, there are some other different interesting topics, like for example, uh, Marlene Bima, one of the biggest representatives uh, in uh, um, yeah, contemporary African art. Um, this kind of there were an article some weeks ago that, uh, in average, like on auction results, the female. African contemporary had better uh, uh, results than the uh, her fellows, uh, the male fellows, for example, this Madame Dumas, uh, so for 6.3, and the Eleanor to me just around 1 to 2 million. So, but the, all of these kind of stories, they appear on the art news or in the newspapers and uh, pushing the, the market and giving it much more attention. For example, uh, another story, um, I, uh, I I remember this very clearly because uh, uh, it's a it's a Nigerian artist, Nideka uh, Crosby. Uh, she's doing these beautiful collage works. Um, over just a short period of time uh, on auction, um, she gained really high results. I remember I acquired a piece by her in three years ago. I didn't have any chance to get one because highly sought after. And then one time it appeared on auction for ninety thousand dollars. Uh, two months later, uh, another work got sold for one million. And all of these stories, these pushing the, 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 the market um, or giving it much more attention. Despite of all these numbers, don't lose yourself into the uh, quality of the artworks. So this is the market and uh, in the next topic I want to work, talk about the art itself. Okay, talking about my collection, Kupere collection. Um, my collection I started back in 2016. Um, the focus, as I said, uh, contemporary Africa and its diaspora. So it's not only contemporary African, it means as well diaspora. It means artists who are related, coming from Africa, born in Africa, but maybe live in London or in New York, where the art scene is happening. 
Okay, yeah, the target is uh, my specific or my personal target is to uh, build a uh, collection with a significant uh, impact, uh, future masterpiece, and especially like from emerging and contemporary uh, emerging artists, like in the early stage with a strong and unique character. Okay, that's me. Um, I'm a car designer working for a Chinese company, Dongfeng. Uh, um, I came uh, around one and a half years ago uh, to China and um, yeah, back in 2016 or 2015, I, I bought the uh, two lithographs, small lithographs from a uh, famous uh, German artist, Gerhard Richter. And, um, but it, it soon somehow realized like these lithographs didn't give me the, the feeling like a real painting. So then I sold them and uh, put, get, took this money to buy my first uh, painting, which gave me much more of this kind of satisfying uh, of of owning a piece of art, living with the art, and this yeah, raised the passion in me. Mm. Um, yeah, back in the university, I had a lot of arts uh, 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 lessons. So I guess like through these that I'm working in the creative field, and I did as well like arts as well, um, the, my view is somehow concentrated on, on this, in this area. So for me, I, I use this kind of thinking um, to, to choose my collections, or my pieces. Um, I think there's, there's kind of a, a benefit uh, in comparison like if you're a banker or someone else. Um, why this name? Um, it's a, uh, like an artificial name I created uh, several years ago. It's a combination of two Latin words. It's a cooper and a prior. Cooper means the desire or demand. Someone really wants something and prior uh, first or precursor. So I want to be like the, one of the first of something uh, everybody wants. This is like this idea of the of philosophy I had in mind. So why this name? Uh, for me the idea was like when I have my personal name uh, it could be mean everything so I somehow want to relate this collection to uh, a name uh, which stands for contemporary African art or for this philosophy and not my personal name. Um, how I select or we select uh, quality is the most important thing in my opinion. Um, there are a lot of things in uh, like outside factors, like artist uh, is going to, or is bought by a famous institution, or attendance biennials, fairs, um, or famous attending famous collections. But for me, all these factors are variables, so uh, it's not could be it's not consistent, right? A collection, famous collection, can sell in itself. So uh, for me, in the end, the opinion, yeah, the quality lasts. So. If I have this piece in 10 years as well, uh, the quality should be still there and uh, give me a passion or a, a feeling of, yes, I still like it. Yeah, uh, you saw this piece on the poster. Uh, it's an artist called uh, Singa Samson. Um, I will do it. <laughs> um, I will do it like this. Like First, I always present the piece in my collection, and afterwards, I will present uh, a little bit of uh, back thoughts about the artists and uh, some other pieces. So yeah, Nigga Sampson born in 1986, so pretty young. Um, he's a self-taught, so he didn't went to college or anything like this. Um, and he's somehow relating his art. Um, his is almost himself. Um, he's always using these kind of, um, um, let's say, Renaissance paintings style, uh, where mostly uh, white people uh, were painted, um, and in his case, he's painting himself like as a black people in this scenario, um, mostly as well with um, like um, more black, um, yeah, like with mm, pieces or like which coming from the Western world, like for example the toothbrushes, um, Louis Vuitton jackets. Chucks, like Converse, these kind of shoes, which are like a common uh, theme or a common uh, product from the Western world, um, and he's showing this in uh, his painting in, uh, in this kind of Renaissance scenario. Back to the thinking of that um, buying art arts in the early stage. When I bought this piece just two weeks after the Gallery Blank project, which I highly recommend in Cape Town, um, uh, went to. Um, um, armory show in uh, in New York with him, 
and uh, now currently like the waiting list is kilometers, kilometers long and it's very hard to get one. I tried to get a second piece but it's, it's very insane like this in now. So like just try to uh, listen to your gut feeling, I will tell you in the end, um, about getting pieces as early as possible. Okay, uh, another artist, um, Kitsanae Wilde Kawami, um, is a painting I bought uh, two years, and a half years ago. Um, she is a very young artist, uh, she's from 1993, um, 26 now, uh, and she's coming from Zimbabwe and moved in the early years, uh, had to leave with her family to London, which she's still currently working on, and this kind of um, story of her life this relation between the leaving the country, living in a new environment, um, she tries to 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 represent or paint in the, uh, in her painting. Um, if you see it in flesh, it's incredible. It's very nice. Um, and uh, currently, she has already, with her young age, um, uh, or, um, what is what again? Very successful. Um, no, 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 wait. Participation at uh, Gasworks uh, Gasworks Residence. residency mm -hmm. in uh, uh, London, which she will show in two weeks, 19th of September, a uh, new body of works there. Um, so it's it's a very interesting uh, mm -hmm. artist at an early stage. Um, so what does quality mean, um, and how do we judge it? Um, this mm -hmm. is a topic probably uh, I got question a lot of time, uh, it's also in and there. How, how, how do you judge this kind of quality? Um, I, I was thinking about a little bit about this uh, as well, like with the golden ratio. Like um, a lot of people we see things and say, okay, this is beautiful, but we don't know why it's beautiful. And I think our eyes have got trained about this kind of golden ratio. It's appearing in media, in uh, commercial advertising design, always this ratio like between the um, between uh, a line like this comparison, this line in comparison to this is the same like this line in comparison to the overall length. So it means 62% to 38% uh, is like this kind of golden ratio. And uh, we see this in famous paintings like for example Mona Lisa as well. So the ratio of a head to the overall, uh, to the overall size of the painting is in the golden ratio. And I think this is one thing um, which, which you and I can, have, I think in the peers as well, like in other, in the simplicity or in, uh, in um, geometrical uh, paintings, it, it, I think there's a similarity as well. So, and I just tried as well, uh, this in my collection, um, I don't want to say this piece is a Mona Lisa, but like for this piece, uh, like um, Jonathan Linden Chase, uh, a young artist from uh, living in LA, um, I just mapped the painting. I just map the golden ratio on top, and then I see, oh, there is a similarity as well, like, like in here, as well here. Um, it doesn't mean like that this is a Mona Lisa. I just say that there is a, a harmonious uh, relation between the lines and everything. Okay. Um, in this case, I talk a little bit about Jonathan and Chase. Um, these are two big works by him. Uh, um, and he got the fame like around one and a half years ago, uh, last year I think, um, where he attended the famous uh, Rubel um, collection and family collection. Uh, this was one of the piece of the exhibition. Um, yeah, that's him. Um, and he's like he has a, like these very uh, figurative paintings uh, about a man, uh, man in the yeah modern society, gay. Um, all of these kind of topics, and um, the interesting thing, like as I said, like he was last year in the Rubel collection uh, in this um, what's the word again? Residency. Residency. <laughs> I always forget this word. And then um, yeah, he, he appeared in this residency, and I got the luck. I bought it half a year ago. So it's uh, always these kind of stories. You have to trust yourself and um, um, take the right decision. Um, yeah, another topic is definitely like innovation. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, the unseen innovative style um, is key for me as well. Uh, I guess you have to focus your eye on this. 
and how this topic, how this, uh, you have to see a lot of art, I think going to every opening, art fairs, museums, especially art fairs, uh, I can recommend like as well to see there's the, 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 uh, the, the reference, uh, difference between artworks because you have a lot of artworks on one view. Um, of course in the museum the quality is good, So, but on the art fair it's very easy to to see, okay, there's a little less quality, there's better quality, and this is insane quality, so you can easily train your eye, in my opinion, from this. Um, just in general, like, uh, this is an artist, uh, this is my second piece of art. Um, it's Mofa Tagadiva, um, it's a piece uh, made out of computer keys, and uh, the interesting idea was behind this, like, um, Africa was long, long, or is still, now it's a little changing, a um, long time, like, let's say, the, the country where all the waste and trash from the Western world uh, got moved into, got burned. And um, so this is a definitely a topic uh, Africa had to face. And um, he's trying to, to, uh, to, yeah, to use these materials uh, and to make these kind of beautiful world sculptures um, out of it. I think a lot of Afri or contemporary African artists is using, like re facing these things, of re reusing materials. Um, and facing these problems. Another artist, um, the piece uh, I bought, this was fourth piece, um, the Zanemel of Mogoli is now currently one of the most famous uh, African contemporary uh, photographer. So, uh, and uh, she got uh, a lot of fame, she's describing herself as a visual activist um, to empower like the gay rights in Africa. Uh, she's black and uh, gay and um, she's trying to empower him to make this visible um, and yeah, you see some more works about her. Um, and the interesting thing, um, she will have next year her first uh, retrospective as well, with uh, Tate Modern already in a young age. <coughs> the next work is uh, Ephraim Solomon, uh, these two pieces from his silent series. Um, it's made out of, or it's um, painted on wood and then engraved uh, afterwards uh, as well like with a drill um, to create these kind of uh, figures facing, um, here we see a little bit more, that's too small, um, yeah, facing these uh, organs. Mm -hmm. um, institutions, famous collectors and collections, um, as I said in the beginning it's very helpful to, to for the artists as well, um, to be, uh, become more known in, on, the, in, on the institutional side um, and beyond collectors, if uh, a big institution is buying a piece of art by these artists. Um, um, for me as well, yeah, there are a lot of these kind of messages like um, this institution buying a piece of art by uh, these artists and then a collector say, oh yeah, they, now let's go for this artist. I, I would recommend you uh, buy it before and try to not fall into this authority bias. So this can be uh, a little bit tricky, it's, it's just the following, it can be a trend, but as well, but uh, in the end take your own decision and uh, maybe become uh, uh, own uh, authority of yourself. Right? Um, yeah, some installations in terms of uh, institution, um, like I got the luck this year for two of my pieces got exhibited in a, in a museum show in uh, Norway about um, contemporary African arts. Uh, here you see Singer Samson, Samson exhibited about this in this show uh, and as well um, as Anela was in. So it's good, like if you start collecting, stay in contact with the galleries. Sometimes they ask you, okay, would you like to lend this piece to a museum show or to an exhibition? Do it. Do it. It's very good for you, for your artist, especially for a gallery. Uh, and it gives a nice feeling to you as a collector as well. Mm. So I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, last year, uh, Kutsanai was in the, in the biennial uh, exhibition at the... Uh, oh, it's wrong. Okay. Uh, in the... Uh, um, the band, uh, in France, uh, Le Rennes in, uh, in, in the west of uh, France. Mm -hmm. So it's good for your artists as well. Okay, another artist, um, this is uh, one of my last pieces in the early, um, Tunji Adani Jones. Um, he's painting these like hybrid, not female, not male uh, figures in a, in a very uh, interesting, inspiring uh, environment. Um, 
he is um, like from Nigeria, moved to uh, um, uh, born in England and uh, with Nigerian parents and so like this. And uh, he uh, went to some uh, to Yale and uh, Oxford, uh, like good schools. And he had just his second show in London. Um, it's kind of inspiring and it's kind of uh, nice uh, fantasy figures uh, really caught my eye. Mm -hmm. like, like back to this uh, additional like pair collection and uh, contemporary African plus it's diaspora. So this is why I add this little thing because like the, when people say, okay, if you just focus on contemporary African arts, you only have to buy artists from the continent. Um, I would like to not to limit this too much because most of the artists uh, maybe born there, uh, then moved, got the first fame, got the solo shows uh, in London or, uh, or other galleries and moved to these cities. So um, this is why I, I don't want to just to limit it just to the country. Um, advices for new collectors. Um, this is like the, the um, yeah. The, I think the most interesting thing <laughs> for, uh, for maybe for you. Um, I just had a, in the beginning an interesting article. Maybe I can recommend this. It's just like a bit like a stereotypes. Um, there are say, four types of art collectors. Um, some of them are financial driven. Some of them may be more academically driven. Um, the estate, for example, um, the barrier is mostly taste and visual pleasure. So uh, he just buys the piece of art to have it, enjoy it, and not very much into the, the, uh, interested in to have a financial gain or, or something like this. Um, one of his famous, uh, the famous estate, I would say, is um, um, uh, what is his name? Yves Saint Laurent, um, who like bought uh, mostly for his visual pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, like the next would be the trophy hunter, who's just focusing on uh, buying the, the real the real masterpieces, um, mostly motivated, maybe more by a financial driven. Um, and on the academical driven level, like you have the, the connoisseur, who's really just for the, the, the mental, academically background in the painting interested. Uh, and then the enterprising collector would be for someone, for example, like Peggy Guggenheim, who wants to really change the, uh, with her collection the history or or, uh, or the mindset or something like this. So who's really a very driven by heart collector. Mm. So just to, as a reminder, these are these stereotypes. I guess there are a lot of interferences between these two. Uh, it's just if you start to, uh, for collecting, uh, it's always interesting what, what, is my, what is my idea? What, why do I do this? So uh, uh, it's kind of interesting to, to know uh, what kind of intention a lot of the collectors have. It's just for information. Um, okay, I have two advices. One is for collecting, and the other one is for selecting the piece of art. So rarity is common, uh, but quality is rare. So a lot of galleries try to make a piece of art rare, so it gains uh, much more uh, sought after. Uh, but still, you still have to find, uh, ask yourself if it's good, right? Quality lasts, as I said. Um, have, just have this in mind. So it doesn't mean if someone is rare, if something is rare, the quality is good too. So just think about this. Second is uh, what you buy is more important than what you pay for it. So if something is really good, the price is reasonable, right? So um, it's just it's, it's coming with this one. So you always have to ask uh, yourself, um, okay, is it good? Is it the quality I want? So the probably the price is is equal to 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 <coughs> kind of topic. Yeah, especially when you have a philosophy or a collection focus, then stick to your concept. So ask what is my purpose of this collection, and then um, rather buy something with this, which enhance or which gives a big benefit to the collection uh, than uh, something which is less quality. Mm. Okay, next. Expensive art is not always the best. This is like what I said, right? Uh, but the best is always expensive. So uh, this means, oh, sorry, um, like a hundred thousand uh, dollars artwork, whatever, uh, is maybe this price currently at the gallery. But you have to ask yourself, is it worth it, or um, it doesn't mean that like, this is good and it's worth in the price. So maybe sometimes a cheaper piece of art uh, has a much better quality than uh, this more expensive art.
This leads me to the next topic, like people with a lot of money and happy lives, they rarely become obsessive collector. So, uh, of course, if someone has a lot of uh, financial backup, he doesn't have to care about what he's buying. If there's a financial gain in the future or not, it doesn't matter to him. Someone with a smaller pocket uh, has to maybe th a triple uh, think about it if he really buys it. Um, if he decides to uh, go for it, then it's good for him. And there's like a, like a historical uh, interesting collector couple, uh, the Fogels, maybe some of you have known. It's a, it's a New York uh, collector, collector couple who, he was a, like a postman and they had an annual um, income of $23,000. Uh, and they have a collection of uh, emerging artists of around 4,700 artworks. The pieces like with Roy Lichtenstein, Cindy Sherman, and they bought them before they hit the gallery. So you see, like these stories, they, they have to push you. And even with a small pocket, you can make incredible uh, collections of artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, of collections, artwork collections. So these were the advice, uh, the last one. Uh, yeah, as I said in the beginning, the more art you see, the better. It creates your knowledge and your view. Um, and these are my, or the advices for collecting. And the second uh, advice is for selecting the artwork. Um, ask yourself what makes the object special. Um, does it fit to your philosophy, to your collection philosophy? Um, is the, really the quality you are looking for, or maybe not? Maybe wait for the next piece. Um, are you pressured by the gallery to buy or by the dealer? It's a common uh, strategy to, from some galleries, if it's a sought after. Uh, sort after artists to put a little bit of pressure. Uh, you have just one hour or two uh, to, to decide. Um, just to, this is strategy, so think about it. Having a backup, I feel pressured um, to buy it or now not. Um, and why do you want to buy it exactly? As a, do you prefer another piece of art by him? Is it maybe a, from a piece from a less quality? And then you gotta have to, 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 to see the balance. Okay, maybe I have the chance now to buy a piece by the artist, or you go for the risk and buy maybe something with a better quality, but you don't know if the gallery will offer you in a half a year a, a, another piece, if it's a sort of artist or something like this, right? Um, and then the, the end the, the question will you still like it in five or ten years, right? So maybe um, you will never sell it again. You still have to live with it, right? And then if you sell it in three years, then okay, why not? Uh, but ask yourself, will you still like it in the future as well? Okay, and the most important thing, I did my really my best, listen to your gut feeling. This is what I always did, seriously. And I have to, I can just write 10 times, did, 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 underline this. Uh, so don't listen too much to other people, uh, question what they say. In the end, it's your decision, it's your money, uh, it's your collection. Uh, your philosophy and uh, listen to your gut feeling. Mm. This is my most important advice. Okay, this is my last piece and this is my first piece. So uh, I put my last piece in the, in the end. Um, it's uh, an artist, Abudia. Um, I bought it was my very first piece. And um, he's from. Um, oops. Ivory <laughs> 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 uh, From Ivory Coast. Um, and uh, he's like, he um, got found by uh, New York uh, Gary um, in a TV show, like he was like a street artist and uh, now currently got a, a lot of fame and one of like the more established already uh, in this field. Okay, yeah, you already saw it. <laughs>